What's up, First Assembly Church, friends, family, friends of the family. Welcome to 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. So glad that you could be with us today. I, my name is Jeremiah, and I have the privilege and honor of serving in the greatest department, the youth department, as one of the youth pastors. Hey, but today I've been assigned the topic of spiritual hunger, growing and building an altar of spiritual hunger. And when I think of this idea of hunger and thirsting, I know that these are natural expressions of our basic human desire and our need for food and water. One of the clear indicators that something is physically wrong when we, is when we lose our appetite. And I believe it is the same spiritually. To hunger and thirst for God is at the very root of our being. It's the way God made us. And when there is no hunger for the presence of God, it is an indicator that something is wrong. Because that hunger is so basic to human nature, it often finds fulfillment in other areas than seeking God. Much as eating unhealthy junk food can dull our physical appetite, so it can be true uh, with things that dull our spiritual appetite. And I think this paradigm is evident in the world we live in, yes? Look at people around us, look at ourselves. We can find fulfillment in every area except for our relationship with God. Maybe in human relationships, a quest for power or money or to escape to physical pleasure. But I find that the most erotic tensions are Christians who allow their appetite to be dulled by things, uh, even religious exercise. And historically, we see this to be true, where we see churches that are filled with believers that are satisfied by activities and programs and projects rather than being hungry for God. When I think of this idea and I think of my own life, I think, man, anybody love to snack? Tell the truth, shame the devil. But so often we can snack away throughout the day on junk food activities. We find that we have no time to feast with God. And we complain about our busyness, we complain about our tiredness, but that is typically a spiritual problem rather than a problem of our schedule. We desire everything except for God. We take God in small doses throughout our day and our week, and we hope that somehow we can catch up on our time with the Lord on Sunday. But when I think of this idea, I know that it, it was something that Jesus spoke about often and is important for us to take a look at. In scripture, we see Jesus talk about developing a hunger and thirst for God. He says this, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled says another thing, whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. It is obvious that the imagery of hungering and thirsting after God is a spiritual concept. I love this book. One of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, wrote in The Weight of Glory, we are far too easily pleased that in the end, in the reason we do not pray, is this is the reason we don't pray more than we do. Nothing less than the joy of heaven is offered to us in the kingdom of light and has been promised to shine in our lives one day like the sun of heaven. We've become satisfied with mere church, mere religious exertion, mere numbers and buildings and the things that we can do. And there's nothing wrong with these things, but they are no more than the foam left by the surface on the ocean of God's glory and goodness. So you're saying, Jeremiah, how then can we develop a hunger for God? If we find ourselves lacking in desire, can it be rekindled within us? Yes, hunger prompts us to seek for something, to fill something. Um, but we find that we can look in other things that are not good for us. And you might be thinking, well, I feel empty. And you might feel a sense of loneliness or longing. And we start to look for these ways to fill our emptiness. I love this, the way John Tyson presents the prodigal son story. He says that the, the prodigal son was hungry. When he was hungry, he went to feed with the pigs, but it wasn't until he was famished until he went back home. But I think in the same way, the way we can snack throughout the day and dull our, appetite, our appetites with things that are not good uh, or take away our appetite from real meals that nourish us. In the same way we fill our schedules and we become busy and our desires no longer long for the presence of God. And these are, this is no reason why that, or the reason why we talk about these things as spiritual disciplines to fast and to pray is because they can cause us to also recognize our physical hunger and draw us to a spiritual hunger. And so my invitation to us churches is, is will we be a church in this series and this time 
to return to the ways of which we develop spiritual hunger, recognizing the, the gift of fasting and prayer to align ourselves with God and to bring ourselves back to that place where we desire Him and only Him. Uh, Tommy Tenney, in his devotional, Experiencing His Presence uh, devotion, God Chaser, prays this prayer that I think we may use as a daily build to our hunger for God. And so I invite you into this prayer with me as we close. If you wanna close your eyes, bow your head, do whatever you feel comfortable, but Lord Jesus, my soul aches at the mere mention of your name. My heart leaps at every rumor of your coming and each possibility that you will manifest your presence. I am not satisfied with mere spiritual dainties. I am ravishly hungry for you and your fullness. I am desperate to feast on the bread of your presence and quench my thirst with the wine of your spirit. May hungering and thirsting for God drive us as First Assembly Church to a passionate and relentless pursuit of you, Jesus. Amen. Love you, church.